But first, the bookstores are packed full of new releases and authors across the country will be hoping that their books end up under your tree. Absolutely, and one of those authors is former MP and Secretary of State Nadine Dorries. And if you believe the claims made in her book, <coughs> Plot, you're going to be unwrapping a little more than a gift this Christmas. But maybe the answer as to how an election-winning Prime Minister was brought down. Morning, Nadine. Good morning. Nice to see you, oh, Nadine. Well, thank you. So, the plot, the political assassination of Boris Johnson. Um, just to quote you, you say people have a right to know about the poison corruption and the cancer that lies in the heart of the party and the government that remains in power. And that's important because the Conservative Party spends more years in government than the Labour Party do. And, and I think that's important because what happens in my party, I think, everybody needs to know. And that's why I wrote the book. And actually, you know, I started writing this book. It ended up being... I didn't know... I've been in the party for 25 years. I've been kind of at the heart of the party for 25 years. I didn't know most of what I've written in this book. It was only as I began to interview people who were deeper and they're longer than myself that this story unraveled. So the story I began writing, which was, you know, was going to be kind of a, a historic account of what had happened over the past three years. When I started writing it, it became something entirely different that even I, at the heart of the party, having served in the Cabinet, didn't know. So what, what was it that made you start looking at this specific thing? If it didn't, if it, if it didn't start out as this... Yeah, I didn't. How did it become this? So... What did you find out to make you go down that path? So, well, it, it isn't, the book really isn't my words. It's the words of people I interviewed when I wanted to find out, you know, what had been happening to get other people's perspectives. And it's, you know, former prime ministers, former chancellors, former cabinet ministers, people who'd been the party a very long time, famous names, people that you'd know instantly if I mentioned yeah. them, including, you know, people that you wouldn't know, people who work behind the scenes, senior civil servants, people who are special advisers. So I interviewed a huge number of people. But I was over, I think it was 72 in total people. And it was a story that through their testimonies, I mean, some people put their names to it. Ian Duncan Smith did one chapter, which is at the beginning, which I think yeah. was brave of him and, and illuminating. Because what he told me about was, what you've seen happen to Boris is exactly what happened to me. They create a story falsely. Well, look, do you know what? I'm you say they. Yeah. Because this is the crux of the book, the plot. Yeah. And it's how you believe that there are uh, a small boys club, shall we say, yeah, or, of, of, a few, of a few guys. You've, yeah. You have named some names in there as well. Yeah. That you believe are the ones that are really running the government. They're running the Conservative Party yeah. and they decide this Prime Minister's time is up. Yeah. And if they decide that, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. Now, with the greatest of respect, Nadine, I do follow politics. I've just always presumed that's probably what goes on behind the scenes anyway. You've been in it. You've yep. been in there. You had no idea that this was... was no, so, was Ryan, there is an important... There's a fundamental point here which is really important and one that I think is being eroded in, in these times, and that is democracy. That is that who is Prime Minister is the choice of the people. You know, when you come from a, a background like I did, which was, you know, a really impoverished background in Liverpool, I come from the poorest wards in the country, and all you have is your vote. The only power you have, the only hope of change that you have, the only thing that gives you agency is that vote. And that is what democracy is based on. And when, what I discovered was that vote means absolutely nothing. Because if you go to the polls and you say, I'm going to vote for... Tony Blair or Boris Johnson or Margaret Thatcher to be Prime Minister. And they are the Prime Ministers who really kind of, like, energised the public vote. Those people, actually, their vote means nothing because this, there are a small group of individuals in the Conservative Party who decide whether or not that vote counts. And I think, I think one of the most important, like, chapters or even paragraphs in the book is almost at the end where Dominic, Laura Kunzberg, and just, you know, a point, absolutely no media picked this up. Laura Kunzberg is interviewing Dominic Cummings and she says to him, you decided, didn't you, a few months after Boris Johnson won the election that you were going to remove him? And he replied to her, no, not months, days. We decided the day after. We knew we needed him to win and to become to become, to get the Conservative Party power, but we didn't want him as Prime Minister. You, I mean, look, 
we, we voted for Boris to be Prime Minister of the country. He was like, yep, yeah, we want him to run it. We know you had a very close relationship with Boris. He was a good and friend. Carrie, of yours. And my, Carrie, obviously. Yeah, yeah, a very close relationship. <laughs> if I left here this week and walked out of here and wrote a book about this morning and, you know, going in on people here, they'd have something to say about that. You were there for a long time. What yeah. has your colleagues, former colleagues, said about this book? Do you know, it's, I could actually, only three weeks after the book's come out, write another book with the amount of information colleagues really? have given me. Yeah. As My in, phone is full what? of people saying, I wish you'd come and spoken to me. And, you know, they, they've actually told me more than I... That, that stuff that was into Some of it I knew. You know, the, the interesting thing about this book is... Um, it's been through three legal layers because oh, this, this small group of men are very powerful. You've been hit with legal letters today, you know, just because I'm coming on your sofa. So this small group of men are very, very powerful. And it's, it's interesting how they control the narrative. Even me being on this sofa today, the other things that you know I can't say to you mm. because you've already been hit with legal letters. Are you and worried it's... about repercussions of... of of putting all of this out there and naming the people that you have named? No, some of the people I've named, some of the people because of the legal yeah. kind of like, you know, the three layers I had to go through. The book was twice as long. It's half the size it was. And uh, no, I'm not worried. You know, one of the things um, somebody said to me, legally said to me was, by doing this, we're protecting you as well, not just legally, but, you know, we have a duty of care to protect you. I mean, it's quite, you know, you said, Ryland, Dark, you know, dark things go on in politics. Politics is a dirty, nasty game. What I discovered in writing that book was it's a lot dirtier and a lot nastier than I think people in the general public know. But this is what I want to ask you, because you've just, you've just said now, live on TV, since I've written the book, many more have crawled out the woodwork, for want of a better phrase, telling well, me it's, it's... other things. What, what other things have you found well, out if you, you were know, to write another book? So, without mentioning the names... Yeah, you, you know, just, names. They're just useful things, like, you know, if... So, Robert Jenrick, resignation. The first day Boris Johnson went on to the COVID inquiry and did very well. People were messaging me saying, isn't it interesting that Robert Jenrick has resigned today? That completely knocks Boris doing well off the, off the media headlines. So you think that was a, a plot? No, 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 no. But then I said, well, you know, we're going into conspiracy theory realms now. And they said, did you know that Robert Jenrick's long-term parliamentary assistant is married to Liam Booth Smith, who is Rishi Sunak's chief of staff. I didn't know that. So you know, I can't. Be coincidence, or do you think that that's intentional? So you know, I just ask the questions. You know, I don't, I don't draw any conclusions. And the book is really the testimony of people who are far more interesting than me, who know far more than I do, and told it in a way which was absolutely gripping and riveting. And I think even if you're, you know, I didn't write this book so that the people who normally buy political books put on their bookshelves and go, look how clever I am, I read all these political books. Oh, no, I wrote it for everybody, and I think like it gives everybody an insight. It feels like a novel. That's what it feels like. Yeah. It feels like a it story. It is written like a novel, but with true accounts that, that you have had in conversations that you've had uh, with people. Um, when I read it, I felt like it was in a language that I could understand. I don't know a lot about politics, which is why I'm always happy when I'm with Ryland, because he knows <laughs> he knows a lot. But I started reading it and I wanted to continue reading it because it was written in a language that I understood. Yeah, well, that was deliberate. So one of the bars I set myself was, I want the fishmonger's wife in Grimsby to be able to read and understand this book, who may not have any interest in politics, but I want her to read this book and want to turn the next page. So I am a novelist. I've sold over three million novels. We know. But this was... I wanted to write it, a factual political book, in the style... And, you know, what I discovered was that actually fact is far, far stranger than fiction. I couldn't have made this book up, when, you know, as a when, when information like this comes to the surface, do you think anybody that might be interested in going into politics, do you think this might put them off? actually doing it or do you think actually it's, it's quite encouraging that maybe people want to get involved and try to make legitimate changes or can people even do that if there's this group of people that stops anything happening unless they're in control so i want people to come into politics which is why i wrote the book and at the moment in the conservative party if you if you want to if you're ambitious and you want to climb the greasy pole it depends on whether this group of people want you to be there so they they literally pull the levers and they drop ministers through the trapdoor. They drop ambitious backbenchers 
through the trapdoor. They decide who will be Prime Minister. They always have reserves, by the way. They, they will never be caught out again as they were in 2016 when Michael Gove stabbed Boris Johnson in the back and it all went horribly well, look, wrong. Uh, we're running out of time, but there's two questions I really want to ask you. Obviously, Boris has been <laughs> part of the inquiry this week. Yep. I know you said you think he's done a great job. In the book, obviously, it suggests that he was ousted by this internal group. Partygate. I mean, that had a lot of well, pretty much everyone up in arms about mm. what we've seen. And we've seen apologies so. from him. Mm. We've seen videos. We've seen pictures. We've seen all of this. Do you not believe that's the real so, reason why... So, Ryan, this is a really important point, because what you've seen are, in Boris's diary, a 10-minute slot, walk into room X, raise a glass, yeah. say, thank you for having worked seven days a week through COVID, you know, 12.30, walk out, go into this meeting. What you saw are those events that he was told in his diary to go and do. The parties, they happened. They happened every single Friday night. There were people who... Did you know were... about these parties? No. And, you know, Boris leaves left Downing Street on a Thursday night to go to Uxbridge and then to go to... And, you know, he promised he would look after the Red Wall. He was up and down the M1 like a fiddler's elbow. So he was out of Downing Street by Thursdays and then over to Chequers. These parties took place in the press office every single night, organised, instructed. You know, I spoke to the people who were instructed to lay out the glasses and the wine bottles in the vestibule outside the How press office. Not about this? Journalists were in those parties. You know, they happened every single Friday night. Well, Downey Street is a great big building, yeah. small offices. And well, he just was, he didn't, it was so secretive. It Very was so quickly, secretive. what do you think is the future for the party? Um, so what I think is what everybody thinks, you know, it's, Many people are focusing on how do we, how does the Conservative Party win the next election? It's gone. It's gone. And I think what people really need to be doing now is focusing on how is it, how do we make sure that we only stay in opposition for five years? Mm. How do we make sure it's not years and years, decades in the wilderness like it was last time? How do we make, how do we rebuild the party? Well, I think I know with... the answer. Do you think Boris should come back? So I, I don't think he wants to. And do you think he I. Do I think he should? I think it would be an absolutely bizarre thought to think that someone with his intellect and his vision and his energy wouldn't be at the top of the Conservative Party moving forward in the future. I think without him, the Conservative Party in the immediate future, probably for quite a long time, is lost. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely. Well, I'm not surprised by any of your answers today, Nadine, but I've got to be honest, the book... It's an easy read, as in the fact mm. of, like Emma was saying, if you're not interested in politics, you can read it. So the plot, the political assassination of Boris Johnson by Nadine is out now. Thank you. Really Thank interesting. You. Thank and um, you. we look forward to the next one, Nadine. Oh, the, the next one's going to be back since. to a novel. This was not a, a labour of love, I can tell you. It was not joyful writing this. Well, look, Nadine, it was lovely to see you this morning. Thank and you so you much too, for guys. coming in. Thanks. Really, really is.